If we change this to fashion, to any other type of food, or to um, FMCG in general, personal care, any other item, China will still be the biggest portion of the pie. And so that's why China is very relevant to a lot of us. Um, and I think uh, when I receive these invitations from the seminarium, for example, I see it as an opportunity to exchange information um, and to tell more people about things that are happening on the other side of the world. Because I think what's also happening is there's a, a firewall of sorts. And there's two types of firewalls. So you might or might not know, the likes of Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, the list goes on. All of those apps you can't use in China. It's just inaccessible. There's something called a VPN, which um, some of us might be using. So if you wanted to access these apps, you have to use something called the VPN. And this app is not so accessible to the mass, to the mass Chinese. It's usually the more educated or um, people have, uh, you know, maybe traveled abroad before or went to university in America, et cetera. Those people will know about the VPN. So most people in China can't access any of the information that we have that's outside of China. So that's one layer of a firewall. The second layer of firewall, I would say, is a language firewall. So Chinese, because of sheer um, popula uh, population advantages, is the most spoken language in the world. Um, but it is almost the least spoken language in the world outside of China. Because the rest of the world is mostly functioning in English. In Spanish is so common. That's why I'm learning it. French. <laughs> um, and so for, some, for a lot of content that's developed in China, it stays there. Unless people came out and told stories or shared things or wrote books. Um, otherwise, a lot of the, the developments, news, inventions, um, the latest trends are all stuck there. It's all stuck in China.